everybody, welcome to round number two of the North American Grand Prix. Monday Night Open Wheel Championship coming to you live tonight from South Africa. The Kyalami Circuit. The 1967 layout of this track and uh, raced only one other time here before last season. And uh, pretty uh, high speed, fun track, a lot of side by side races. Should be a good night. Joined here once again by Brad Harris. Brad, welcome. Uh, can I can I just say how it's really nice to be back racing again? <laughs> Two weeks in, right? It is a long layoff, and I gotta say I am happy to be back. And second weekend, right? So, so I got stats, I got points to look at, I got stats, so I'm happy. Happy with my ML. Happy with uh, the circuit too, by the way. Yeah. This is going to be one hell of a race tonight, Al. With these cars, short short lap times, this is going to be intense, man. As the field makes its way out. Busy circuit here as the, the field uh, heads out for their out lap. As we just clicked over the qualifying, 25 minutes of qualifying. Let's take a quick look at the track map for tonight's race. Uh, this Kyalami circuit, like I said, high speed. Uh, Nine corners, and uh, well, Brad will give you a rundown here. We'll jump on board with somebody in a second. But uh, from what I recall, last season, Brad, it was a pretty uh, intense race. Yeah, kicked off our first first event last season, and so guys, we're still trying to get the car figured out, and ended up being quite the barn burner last last season. So I suspect that this is really good track, and it lends well again to this to this car. These guys are really going to be able to go for it. Uh, they're going to have to take some chances here and uh, and really stress the uh, the grip levels. So Chris Moses is going to be the first to act here, so let's jump on board with him as he makes his way around this. 4.1 kilometer circuit. Yeah, going to be a third or second gear corner for most of the guys here through the through the Pro Thorn, and it's it's a little difficult to pick up the apex, so you have to go in there and kind of you have to be a little patient until you pick up that apex. Finally, it's going to be full throttle coming off for the next couple corners, and then uh, into the next corner is pretty pretty difficult. Oh, another sunset bend, all right. So we just had oh, we'll stay on track. Well, just had one last week. Bit of a mistake there, clipping the inside curb, and very difficult second gear corner here. Really off camber, tough to pick up the uh, the braking zone in the, in the clubhouse there, and uh, the acceleration, very difficult. A little uh, left-right S uh, combination there, right? Also very difficult on entry, and then the last corner here, extremely important this last corner. It's gonna account for the majority, really, of your lap time, really. If you wanna put a good one in here, if Moses wants a chance at pole here on this lap, he's gonna have to do better than that, because it's not gonna happen, so. <laughs> uh, Looks like he made a bit of a mistake here as he closes out this lap. So, not a bad lap to start. 108.9, uh, but Chris quickly shuffling down the order. Felice Amart making his debut here on Monday. This is the last week of the 108.192 to provisional pole. DeGrau is looking quick as well. Uh, just a tenth off the leader. Uh, provisional pole set of Savard. So, DeGar DeGrau, who carrying 15 kilograms of ballast for tonight's race as second last week is uh, looking quite crazy with the weight. Yeah, he is. Those guys have been getting in some good practice. I think they're they're pumped. They're ready to go. They uh, they want to make some noise early in this championship with a few rivals uh, slipping back uh, last week, right? And then a couple not showing up. Uh, Philippe Samard being one of them. Continue to follow DeGras here. Uh, left hand, right. Houston. Oh yeah, Houston and his teammate Parsons was on the right hand side of the road. Joel Lacour, quick, just ahead of DeGras. Quickest through the second sector was Joel Lacour. We'll pick him up now as he crosses the start finish line. Joel Lacour to provisional pole with a 107.8. DeGras unable to improve. Bard now makes his way down the start finish straight for another attempt at pole. Yeah, some different setup options here once again, specifically on the arrow. A lot of these guys, maybe particularly here in qualifying, actually will be running completely stripping off as much wing as they possibly can. 
uh, seems to be the quick way around this place in this car. So it's been back-to-back -back weeks now. These guys have chosen to run a very low downforce of package. Uh, but Sleeps more looks like he is still able to get the car turning pretty well in third gear. So primary gear through those, uh, those first couple corners. Interesting to note, some guys in second. Joel was quick in the first two sectors. This is his teammate now, Samard. Samard got off to a pretty amazing start last season, winning the first two races. Winning three out of the first five races, but uh, mired by uh, a bunch of DNFs after that. Which pretty much took him out of contention, but Samard here is going to improve, just edging out his teammate. Actually, no, that's not true. Beating his teammate by four tenths of a second. Yeah, it's a pretty sound slacking. 107.4. Uh, he's got his best lap, though. His best lap uh, leading up to this practice was 107.2 as he gets it wrong into Clubhouse. And it's odd looking racy now, currently in third. Wow, oh, seven tenths off provisional pole. Yeah, nonetheless, that's absolutely right. Looking, looking racy. He showed great pace last week. Kind of got, kind of got screwed a little bit. It has to be said. Last week, Al got uh, uh, involved in a few incidents there in the first lap. Not really necessarily all of them his completely his fault. So, uh, a little uh, rebound maybe for David's on this week, huh? Yes, yeah, a bad luck for Zon. Last week, as the grass start his hot lap. Uh, Lemansky was also looking quick into the 107s in practice. Currently sitting in fifth, one second off the leader. John Houston back in sixth. Matt Taylor, last week's winner, carrying 20 kilograms of ballast. Slotted in seventh at the moment. Greg Myers, who put in a quite a bit of practice for tonight's event, sits eighth. Aaron Parsons. Back at night, they just took the car for a ride after he was setting up for the final corner onto the main street. Ke uh, sorry, Kevin Miller in 11th. Chuck Carter sitting in 12th. Ryan Robbins back in 13th. You get Giordia running in 14th. Mascarelli well, just drops down to uh, 16th as John Rothen took that position away. Newcomer making his debut here tonight. Colton Fox. Currently in 18th. Brian Story. 19th. Mark Gomez is back in 20th. And Joe Mullen makes his return here. At least uh, a couple races last season or the season before. Return. Oh, sits 22nd. But back up front it is uh, Ian Jolicor. Currently quick through the first sector. With, I believe, his teammate just ahead of him on track. That looks like, yeah, one one spot ahead. It's Ryan Robbins, the, the very car in front. But uh, you mentioned Greg Myers there in that, that 125 laps of practice. It is very odd for Greg Myers to have a lot of practice. But I guess that what's, that's what comes when you are second in points. Global Sites uh, Taxi Service, Al. Second in points. Pretty amazing as Joe LaCour, you get a toe off the back of Ryan Robbins here. This may help him. I'm going to. Oh. Had a bit of a bobble there. Ran a bit wide entering the uh, front straight. Kind of cost him a little bit of time, but he is 700 behind his teammate. So great lap there for Joe LaCour. He's currently in front connection, sitting one two at the moment, followed by DeGras, Zahn. Still in the top five, Houston now has worked his way up to a pretty quick lap around here, a minute and change. Previous uh, lap record holder here was Philippe Zamar, but that was in the uh, 67 Ferrari 12. Best lap here was a 16 flat, so nearly Ten seconds quicker than last season. 
it was a pretty quick lap then for those cars. Uh, it, it's a much quicker lap now in these cars. It's just it's just a short track. It's a bull a bull ring. And I think it lends to some pretty darn good racing, but it makes this qualifying pretty important, right? If those times are going to be pretty close, then uh, you can make up a lot of positions by not making up much time on your competitors. Manski with a good first two seconds. This could bring him up into the top three here with a, looks like a very clean third sector and good enough for fourth. So lost a bit of time there in the final sector. Yeah, still pretty good though. He needed to jump up because he'd been kind of languishing a little bit there for the first half of that qualifying period. Session here so far for David Zahn. It's a room for improvement. Yeah, boy, and quickly back out on track. He ended that lap, and he was all anxious to just to hit drive and get back out there again. So Zahn's looking very motivated here. Smart is up in his second sector here. He takes it a bit wide. Interesting, he's sliding off, uh, not holding the apex tight on the last corner there, but swinging wide rather. Improves. And improves. Picks up a little bit of time on his best lap, so. 107.413. Samard. Looking further back at John Houston. Six, Taylor. Up to seven, carrying that 20 kilograms. He is. Uh, Good despite the weight ahead of Chris Moses back in 10th, who is as uh, Taylor pulls into the pit lane. So, a lot of traffic here. Oh, if you haven't noticed, it's, uh, it's some guys run into some traffic. Doesn't appear to be too bad, however, guys need to be quite courteous out there on track. Yeah, it's not a terribly full grid. I mean, 23 is, you know, healthy number, but it's it's certainly, you know, we could easily have had 28 or, or 30. Um, so, yeah, not too shabby. Missing a couple guys. Uh, all David Rally. Rally looking pretty racy last week. He also ran into some, some trouble. Did. Yeah, looking at the John Houston now, those guys, Houston and Parsons, we saw them not get off to the best of starts last week. I'm looking to see if they were going to recover and put in a good effort this week. John Houston's not looking so bad so far there in the, the sixth position. It just started to put in some better laps, so maybe riding the ship. Yeah, in fact, Houston does pick up a couple spots there on that lap to uh, the fifth. Right on board with Chris Moses, quick in the first sector. Yeah, talking with Chris Moses a little bit, he was really feeling great about the car. <laughs> Thought the car car was feeling uh, absolutely great for him. I know that he has a bunch of strategy options. I was kind of looking at his times last night as he was talking about how great the car was feeling and suggesting that it might feel great, but it's a little slow. He said, no, 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 I'm in great shape. So he knows what he's doing. And he improves. Good off in the first, uh, in the third sector. Eight tenths there, but uh, jumps up to P7. John Houston bumps Zahn down another position, so Houston now up into the top five. Joel Ekman off track last, last week's star of the race, I would say, aside from the uh, winner. Had a great run. 
currently in 10th. Kevin Miller, after missing last week, returns for his debut here on uh, Monday night, season 34. And now uh, he's looking racy in practice, currently behind here in this qualifying session, running at 11th, but uh, we've seen him the last few seasons. Uh, for, for wins. Uh, he's finished on the podium a number of times. Doesn't necessarily qualify all that well when he does. So, uh, Miller ends up here tonight. It's like never surprised to look up and suddenly find yourself looking at Kevin Miller in the top five over the course of a race. I'm like, I'm never shocked by that anymore. <laughs> it just... It just, you know, seems, seems to happen occasionally because he is a very consistent driver. He's a very good driver. He's very smooth and consistent. And when he stays out of trouble, he's going to get good, good finishes. Talking to some of the guys in the paddock, uh, well, Taylor and Ian Moses as Miller. Is he going to improve his time? Not appear that is going to. Omar Gomez, however, uh, currently in 22nd. We're under 10 minutes to go in this session. Well, the four up big in the first sector. Two tenths up. Uh, provisional pole. Going to need all that. He wants to jump his teammate, but that uh, French connection after what uh, I think Jolicor scored what ninth or eighth or ninth place points last week, and that was it. Oh, so. big mistake there for Jolicor in sector two. So, but Second right now, French. Ah, oh, that's all right. But right now, French connection looking very good in that one and two spot provisionally. It's coming down to it now, though. Eight and a half minutes left to go, and I uh, these guys are all going to try to find a little something extra. With Lemansky now. As he takes it wide. With David Zahn just ahead of him on track. Lemansky backs out of it. David Zahn also backs out of it. Yeah. Zahn was going to let him go. Houston, however, looking for the decent first sector here. So going back to my previous point, what I was going to say, I was talking to. Taylor and Moses, and both of them seem to think that the weight is having a uh, an effect on the car here tonight. Certainly, Taylor currently in eighth, about a second off provisional pole. So I like mean, the weight may be having a, an effect on those guys. DeGrom, not so much. Well, DeGrom's I think this. Like, pick itself out, sorry. No, that's okay, Al. I Look, if you're a second off, if Matt Taylor is a second off uh, at this track, where you're only running, you know, a minute 10 lap time or less, then I think that says something. I think that, that says that, yeah, the weight's probably having an effect. Watch Chris Moses here attempt to improve on his time. He is uh, not looking good at the moment. Yeah, he's I've watched a couple laps. It does look like he actually is locked on the line big spin yeah picking up a lot of on throttle understeer is what I've, I've noticed out of that car really pushing in this second sector he's made a number of mistakes and there's another one he's gonna have to fail and try it again yeah, it's almost certainly a situation where he he knows where he needs to pick up time right so he's uh he's trying Going for a little bit too much trying to make up that, that time he knows he's, he's lost. Jesse that Olsen. never happens to me. Jesse Olsen uh, filling in for an absent Thomas Schubeck. A little behind on practice. Uh, last minute call up. And uh, has some work cut out for him. For all we know, Jesse Olsen hasn't even been in the mod until, you know, 
35 minutes ago? That's probably the case, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that really could be the case. Also, he's running more downforce. He is getting swamped on the straight, so. Um, but, uh, you know, safety first, I guess. Going with Joel Ekman. Yeah, these guys must be running lower wing or crushing Most that first sector. Yeah, sorry. Most of the fast guys are are not running anyway. Uh, well, zero zero. So whatever downforce is left after, you know, that's that's what they're running. So it, it improves straight line speed a, a bunch by orders of magnitude, of, you know, as opposed to like from one to two, right? Um, uh, however, the word around the paddock is that they will have to be running a bit more downforce over the next couple of years. So we'll see. Another driver go off, Kevin Lemansky yet with a good first sector. His teammate Jake Feemster. Showing a no-fall penalty, that's right, no time set for him. Tonight, another five to go in this qualifying session. And looks like, aside from Samard and Joe LaCour, not seen anybody really challenge those two guys. Things are looking good for them as Lemansky is not going to improve. Not yet. Still plenty of time to get uh, some solid laps in. Uh, it being a shorter track, a few extra opportunities. Still very impressed by the job David Zahn has done on qualifying at the moment. Moses Taylor, Parsons, Parsons back in 12. Still. Yeah. Another slow start for him this season. Same with, well, Houston in the top five, but a tough start to his race this season last week. Getting caught up in some uh, incidents. I believe he was the last car in the lead lap last week. Ooh, now Kevin Miller. Uh -huh. Jumps up to 10, so he with a 108.5, so good lap for him. Jump on board with him as he starts a flyer. Can he bump his teammate down and have that pole position away from Samard? Now takes it over the curbing. That does upset the car a little bit. Some guys with particular setups could have difficulty running over that curb. Good first sector. This is where he's been struggling here, the second sector. Made a number of mistakes through here. Let's see if we can keep it together. This corner in particular. Yeah, looks like he was pretty. Looks like he was pretty aggressive on entry there on the right hander. A little too aggressive. You do want to be a little bit more patient and pick up the the apex, uh, so you can get better acceleration off as opposed to trying to carry speed on entry. I think that might be catching Ian out there. Ooh, big oversteer there. Turn eight. And Joel Accor not going to improve. So Bard is in the pit lane. And the team is done. And taking a bit of a break. Sipping on his uh, cola or coffee or his beverage of choice. Behind in the first two sectors, doesn't look like he'll be. Not nah, is done. He's parked. Oh, I take that back. He's going back out. Right. Oh. Give it another go here. There's still some time. Oh, maybe he's just practicing to start. Yeah, he's on the hards. He's on the hard tire, so I think that's exactly it. Oh. Big off there. Not sure who that was. It's on. Look, trying to uh, pick up a spot here, but uh, do it with that second sector. So he'll have a time. He'll have enough time to get one more in. Ekman. 
Stroll off the car ahead of him. Pick up some time. Not tonight. Really knows the tail going into car one. That's Chuck Carter ahead of him. Oh, Neely has it coming together there with Chuck as Chuck took it wide. Five seconds to go on the session. John Houston with a good first and second sector. He nails his third sector. He could find himself in the top three. Got to keep the nerves in check coming around the last corner. Did a pretty nice job there, actually, Al. Pretty nice and tidy. Got good acceleration coming off. I don't know if this is going to, certainly not going to be for the pole, but I think he's got a great chance to improve his time. And he does. He jumps up to fourth, bumping Romanski down to fifth. 7.8. Nice lap from John Houston. David Zahn with a very good first two sectors. Oh, and he brings it into the pits. Must have made a mistake. Well, the session is over. Chris Moses is still on a flyer here. Well behind in the second sector, so and a ton of understeer on on throttle, bunch. And Moses brings it into the pit, so it's going to be Philippe Samar with pole position tonight here at Kyalami, back-to-back poles at this track for Philippe, edging out his teammate by a tenth. Uh, DeGraff stuck third, just over four and a half tenths off the pole center. So, nice debut here for Samard in season 34, throwing that uh, Lotus on pole, Brent. Oh, yeah, it's great. And, I mean, Ian, teammate Ian Jolicor right there in, in second as well. Now, we have seen <laughs> plenty of incredible qualifying efforts, um, not only by that team, but, of course, by Philippe Samard. And not always there in the race, Al. Have we seen the, those types of times translate? So we'll see how it is tonight. Obviously, Samard uh, goes very well. But sometimes that uh, flat-out pace does not quite match the overall race pace. So well, we got a brief moment here. Going to run down the standings here on Monday night. Uh, just after one race, it is Matt Taylor, your leader, with 26 points. DeGrat in second, his teammate with 20. Chris Moses in third with 18. Ekman in fourth with uh, 16 points. And Jake Feimster in fifth with 14 points. The team championship, Captain Clutch, that's DeGrat and... Uh, Matt Taylor, they lead with 46 points. Uh, Global Sites, Taxi Service with 28. That is uh, Ekman and Greg Myers, their second with 28. Squeaky Wheels, Kevin Lomansky and Jake Feeps are third with 24. Precision Motor Races, Racing, Chris Moses. And uh, looks like Schubeck and whoever is going to fill in. 18 points in fourth. And your dog, my face, in the top five. Chuck Carter and John Wathen with 15 points. Not what we're used to seeing, Brad, there in the uh, in the standings. Um, no, but, you know, you mentioned your dog, my face there in, in fifth. That's really not so surprising. Uh, it's only one race, of course, but really, both those guys, Waffen and Carter, can put in pretty good results in these cars, Al. I feel like it suits them pretty well, and um, those guys give darn good efforts, have been the last couple seasons, in this open wheel class of uh, class of cars, so especially with the first couple weeks being a little lighter on the grid, I think those guys do have an opportunity to make a pretty good championship points fight. So we got about uh, two and a half. Oops, what did I do here? All right, we got about two and a uh, two and a half minutes here before we go green. Just real quick, touching on last season's race. Uh, race went. Uh, one hour, four minutes. It's uh, going to be 49 laps here tonight. Uh, track temperature, uh, air temperature 30 degrees Celsius. Track temperature 37 degrees. 
Celsius. Let's see. Most of the guys looks like the guys on the hards. Looks like they're going to be doing a one stop. The guys on the softs, a two stopper. So looks like a lot of the guys in the top 10 on the harder compound tire. We'll see how things develop here for there any last second uh, changes. Mm, indeed. So let's take a look at the starting lineup here for tonight's race. It is going to be Philippe Samard, your pole sitter with a 107.413, followed by Jolacor. Ian Jolacor is going to start second. Marc DeGras in third. In fourth, it is going to be John Houston with a nice qualifying lap. And in fifth, Kevin Lemansky. Boy, got, got a bunch of Canucks dominating the top five. It's nice to see, but uh, Dave Zahn's going to start us off there in sixth place. Chris Moses is going to take seventh. Uh, Matt Taylor is going to take eighth. Greg Myers, nice time for him in ninth. And Kevin Miller takes tenth. In 11th, it's going to be Joel Ekman, followed by Aaron Parsons back in 12th. Ryan Robbins is going to start in 13th. John Wathen in 14th. And Chuck Carter is going to start in 15th. Yeah, Jesse Olson, the fill-in there for PMR tonight in 16th. Lou Mascarelli starts 17th. Iggy Shorta starts 18th. And Dale Balwig is going to take 19th. And Brian Story takes uh, 20th. Newcomer Colton Fox is going to start in 21st, followed by Omar Gomez. And Jake Feemster with the no call bringing up the rear of the pack. So that's going to do it for your start in order here tonight. Any predictions, Brett? Oh, boy. I, I You like the French connection here starting from the front of the pack. Um, I got to say it's going to be one of those two guys. Well, what we're going to have is one hell of a battle for all the positions behind, Al. Look at that grouping. I mean, starting with DeGraw all the way back to Parsons in 12th. Holy cow. That is a section of track I want to watch. Let's see. Hopefully, uh, Samar can stay out of traffic. He's going to be tough to beat here tonight as we're about to go green from Kyle Lott. And we are away. Really nice start for Moses in the back as well as a great start from Samar. And he needs to feel it to turn one. to start from the field and it looks like DeGraw now having a look on the inside of Samard sorry that's John Houston John Houston on the soft tire looking to jump out to the early lead ahead of Samard who's on the hearts wow. Houston's going to have the advantage on uh, in grip here and lighter fuel oil look for Houston to take over the lead here or try to take over the lead here down the main straight. Oh, we got Mascarelli sideways and then backs it into the wall. On board with John Houston now as he tries to get a run on Samar down the front straight. Looks like he's going to get the pass made. And Houston takes over the lead here on lap two. Yeah, I think Samard understands the situation here, though it's uh, he doesn't really want to give up the position that uh, John Houston is on the soft. And I think uh, Samard's going to go ahead and let the strategy play out here. I think uh, if you're still smart, you're thinking that the race is going to come back to you with those hard tires. What an incredible start from Aaron Parsons after starting in 12th all the way up to 6th here after a lap. Wow, also on the soft, so... Oh, embroiled in some heavy traffic. Oh, look at this train. Jeepers. The red pylon all the way down to 15th now. Advantage 
Parsons on the outside. He's got the grip. Oh, and he's got contact. Parsons and. Looks like Parsons involved. Oh, Ryan Robbins clips David Zahn. Robbins got, has it turned around. What a very difficult start there. Tough situation. Could have been a situation there where Carson trying to make a, the move on the outside of Zahn. Zahn just didn't have a grip. Kind of washed up in the park. Very frantic start, Brad. Uh, I think something was brewing there. Yeah, I, it's yeah, it's super, super, super unfortunate there. Um, yeah, but look, it, uh, it comes with you know gaining some speed and running toward the front, and then kind of learning to make sure you can stay up front. I guess. Last week was not his, his fault, but it's what maybe we'll see. But in the meantime, Houston's uh, gaining a little bit of ground on Samard. Now, you don't know if it's going to be enough. Early days and all that, but uh, boy, Houston, I think those guys are on two-stop strategy. They're going to have to really start laying down the law here from the front. Zion into the pits already here at Parsons with a heavily damaged front end. So let's we'll see what he does if he elects to jump into the pits. Back to the Miller. Both these guys on the soft tires. Got to put the pressure on Kevin Lemansky. I'm sorry, they got around Kevin Lemansky. Got to put the pressure on Matt Taylor. Taylor was running in fifth. You know, I was talking with guys about the difference between the softs and the hards and the performance advantage. And I was hearing about maybe half a second a lap there about, but you know what? It really is more because of the, the starts, right? Because you have such a larger advantage there immediately in the first couple, three laps. Um, and then and then the fuel load too. So, boy, it's, it's a big advantage. The hards may play out better, but the softs have such an early big advantage. I mean, we're seeing it. At least at this track. Miller continues to have Joel Eckman for sixth. Both guys on the soft tires. So Houston out front is going to have to get to work here and really throw down some really fast laps. Because you're betting Samard and Joel Acor are on a one stop. So if he wants to win this race, he's got to really get to work now and lay down some blisteringly fast laps. Look for him to yeah. come in around lap uh, 17. It sounds about right. I mean, you need to pick up, you need to make up whatever difference it is in the pits, right? Um, over the course of two stops. So, I don't know what Houston needs to get out to, but probably at least 12 and a half seconds thereabouts, right? It's going to be at least 30, 30, 40 seconds in and out. And Parson side by side into one, but that arrow damage may be hurting Parson. Like he gets the pass made on Jesse Olsen. You know, going quickly, touching back on strategy here again, real fast. A few guys I was talking to also uh, are we're thinking about the possibility of running hards deep, okay? Or starting on the softs and then taking the hards for a long second stint. So basically running one stop on the hards or the mediums, right? Uh, but just taking one longer than the other. Just to confuse things uh, just a little more. Myers now starting to close the gap up a little bit on Chris Moses. Moses running back in the ninth spot. Yeah, running a couple of positions off of his Moses' starting position, but I mean, I hear Greg Myers. You know, why aren't you taking a run at Moses? As far as you know, you're you're running at about the same pace. I mean, they qualified more or less together on the grid, right? Running on the hard, started back, back to the grid, but put a move on Omar Gomez going into turn one. Just 
track really lends itself to some great overtaking opportunities, but with a lot of side-by-side, -side, there's a lot of trust involved. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, also, I'm not on the same car, so uh, that was just an unfortunate, unfortunate situation. Yeah, and the track is wide in most places. You know, maybe this little, the second sector corners there can, can get a little nice. But, uh, yeah, no, I was going to mention Jake Feemster, actually, because we know that he's got good speed. And uh, with that no-qualifying penalty, he's definitely going to be a guy to watch moving forward here as the race progresses. Neil Galwick out after eight laps. Ron Houston oh. makes that fast lap of the race. Come on with Joel Edwin now as he tries to make a move. Uh, Taylor, he looks like he's going to get that pass, okay? Oh, we got a car coming out of the pits. Oh, that's one of the uh, Argentina boys. I think that might be Iggy. And Eckman gets the pass, made. Boy, I mean, for now, John Houston is picking up a uh, consistent time. He's not uh, maybe doing harder burner laps, but he's doing pretty good. I mean, he can't be running that far off their, their qualifying pace. <laughs> really? I mean, he had, Houston, where did he start? Fifth, sixth, something like that? He was down, well, I guess top five, but nonetheless, didn't look, uh, you know. So, really, he's doing pretty good so far. Anxious moment there for Lemansky and Miller trying to get around Giordia. Yeah, now, Lemansky, I don't, I don't know what happened to him on the start, but he's definitely getting... Well, I'm questioning what's going on with Kevin Miller. He seems a little off on the soft tire. Lemansky is really... Hanging on to the back. Yeah, I guess I guess right now if you're Kevin Miller, what's saving you is the lower fuel load. He's making two stops. Side by side. Looks like Miller's gonna have the advantage here. On the outside. This is, oh no, Lemansky gets the job done. Nice job by Kevin passing uh, Kevin Miller. I gave him a bit of the uh, the old slide job, but uh, you know, pretty fair, I'd say. Miller's car looks clean, so it doesn't look like he's got any damage. So. Oh, Samad done. Oh, did not see what happened, but it's it for Samad. Wow, boy, you have to. You wouldn't think that'd be down to a mistake, right? It didn't look like he was under any uh, particular pressure. Uh, he had his teammate behind, so... Let's see what happened to him, but... Uh, it's, it's ball game for uh, Philippe. Wow, bummer. Gotta say, Brad, not too surprising. Seen him make mistakes in the past, and then unless it was terminal and whatnot, but I just it would be really rare to make a mistake in that spot. I mean, the tires are up to temperature, you're starting to burn off some fuel, you're kind of just you're driving to a particular time, you aren't really trying to push, even right, um, because you're on the hards. Uh, you're just trying to kind of limit the damage and keep things nice and tidy. Uh, and so for a driver like that to make a mistake in that situation is, is really strange. No pressure from behind. Like I was saying, he had his teammate behind him, right? So no no worry there. Um, now, it could have been, but I would suspect a disconnect, honestly. Oh, that could be it. But nonetheless, it, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a surprise. So we just watched uh, David Zahn make a pass on uh, Mascarelli. Also now putting the heat on John Robin. Both cars on the hard tire. Colton Fox running in the pole as, uh, who is that? Watson diving into the pit lane. There on lap 11. Watson must have made a mistake. He's on the hard, right? Oh, no, he's rolling. Yeah. So, yeah, newcomer Colton Fox running uh, currently in 16th on the hard tire. Yeah, 15th as it would 
takes uh, Walker to get a service. So nice start here from Colton. It's tough to jump into uh, the league like this and uh, try to compete against some of these guys who've been doing this for a very long time, but uh, not a bad debut. Uh, looks yeah. okay. Yeah, speaking of debuts, I got to mention Jesse Olsen. Look, uh, I was here. I, I'll admit it. I was skeptical watching his pre-race lap times. Uh, frankly, wasn't looking pretty good, but Jesse Olsen now filling in for Thomas Schubeck, running up uh, in the 11th, about to get passed, but, but nonetheless, turning very consistent times. I think just about turned his best lap there at 11.4. Yeah, not far off his teammates' lap time, so... Yeah respectable debut for Jesse with limited uh, seat time here as he allows Steve sort of go by uh, a nice run but Jake Jake running in the 110 so Jake uh, has really good pace here early in the stint and expect him to just to go quicker here as this race goes his first stint goes on yeah, like I said, it's going to be interesting to watch his progress already uh, up into the 11th position after 13 laps. So it's, uh, you know, nearly a position a lap, right? So John Houston, our leader, currently six and a half seconds ahead of Ian Jolicoeur running in second. So we expect Houston to be in around lap. 16, 17 or so. He's got his best lap of the race, 108.8. To Joe LaCour's 109.2 best lap. So speed difference not seem to be that much of a gap there between the softs and the hards. Man. No, and you, know, you have to you have to drive so fast to overcome that that entire pit stop difference. But it is a relatively short pit lane. I mean, the pit lane entry is. It's just completely flat out. I mean, you're coming in at whatever it is, 170 miles per hour, right? Um, and it's a relatively short pit lane, but you do have to go fast right now, actually. And I'm kind of liking what John Houston is doing. I'm not going to give him uh, the, the go signal yet that he's the strategy is going to pay off, but right now it's not looking too shabby out. Matt Taylor hanging on to the back of Joel Ekman. Ekman with a three-second gap. For Matt, but Evan once again finds himself uh, up in the top five here in the first stint. Granted, he's on the soft tire compared to uh, the guys around him. Taylor running in fifth, Lomansky behind him in sixth. Kevin Miller now up to seventh. Miller does seem to be finding his range here. Last lap 109.9, so not too bad of a lap for Kevin. He's going to be running against Greg Myers in ninth. Aaron Parsons, after his incident in the first dip, uh, in the first few laps, finds himself in tenth. The Chiefs are now up to 11, those are 12. Chuck Carter running in 13. For Mark Gomez in the points of 14, followed by David Zahn. Colton Fox, 16. Mascarelli, lap down, 17, followed by Watton, Giordia, and Ryan Robbins. Last running car is Robbins. Yeah, and uh, you know I was gonna, I was gonna make a note on Ryan Robbins earlier. He, uh, we've seen some good pace out of Brian Robbins, just not so much yet this season, right? Um, so I'm kind of still waiting for Brian to show up in this car and start, start putting in those good performances we saw last last season. Um, but yeah, you already out. A little further back, uh, Parsons was beginning to close the gap up on Greg Myers, who's running at nine. Lansky and Taylor relatively close. But the pit window is going to open up here, so let's see what John Houston elects to do. Look at his 
lap times. Uh, still running competitively. 109 flat, uh, flat there on his last lap. Wonder, uh, how deep is uh, Houston going to take this? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like I said, another strategy option for these guys are to start on the uh, softs and still take only one stop, right? Slap on the hards and and then take a longer stint on the hard. So it may not necessarily even be two stops. I could be getting ahead of myself with that. Um, I know that that was an option. There, there are basically three options. One, one stop kind of, you know, for hard and hards or one stop hard and soft in some combination. And then of course, there's two stops on the soft. But given, given the Houston speed, it just seems like he has much less fuel on board, right? And I, I guess that still makes sense if you're gonna take a, a hard stint very very deep right you'd still start with the low fuel but so we're just gonna have to wait and see and he just sets fast lap of the race uh, we set it to the 108 810 so working lap 17. if he is on two stops he's actually i think kind of close if he because you see you take less time on your stop with the fuel right so if you're look, looking at gaining nine seconds per stint basically then you're looking at 27 seconds total and that's getting you pretty close to overcoming that uh, that single stop gap Moses just sets his personal best of a 109.9 so he's starting to pick up some pace Parsons in the pit lane getting serviced in on lap 17 so something tells me Houston will be coming in on this lap yeah here he comes so it was Parsons and he went softs to softs so it looks like it's two stops for Aaron so Jolicoeur is going to take over the lead of the race Let's see what Houston elects to do here. That stop for Parsons was uh, Ekman now in as well. So that stop for, oh, pretty quick stop for Houston. And looks like he is going to rejoin in. Yeah. Yeah. So again, a soft for Houston. But that, you're right, absolutely right. That was a pretty quick stop. So I think he will be, those guys will be gaining fuel time as well in the pits. But boy, Kevin Miller, that uh, that could throw a wrench in the gears here for John Houston. Because right now, it really is nip and tuck. I think John Houston still is a little bit behind the uh, the curve here, making that two stop strategy work. Kevin Miller has yet to stop. He is also on the soft tire. Oh, this is a guy who may. Uh, all into that strategy you were just speculating about. Well, they made it 18 laps on the sauce. So, I, I mean, what, it's another 30 to go, right? It's still out there. It's going to stay out there. Yeah, I mean, you got to think if you can get it within 20-something that you would have a reasonable shot to, to put on the hards, right? It's the the other thing is just the, the fuel though, right? That that fuel weight really does slow you down quite a bit. There's a seems to be a pretty dramatic cutoff at a at about 100 liters, 90 to 110 liters, somewhere in there. The car just really doesn't perform until it gets down toward that 100 liter mark. So Eckman rejoins the race in ninth. Lemansky now closing up on Matt Taylor. Battle is uh, heating up here. Houston and Miller knows the tail. Now, this is a situation where Houston needs to be a little patient. We've seen him in these uh, situations in the past and get, mm. gets caught out. Yeah. Yeah, good point, Al. So he knows uh, Miller needs to pit. He's on the softs. He's got better pace than Miller. He needs to take chances. Yeah, he was sure hoping that Miller would pull off there. 
uh, that time by. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, I think Houston's still in there with a shot to, to make it work, but he doesn't need to do what he can to, to get by, but yeah. Really nice battles heating up here. Lemansky, Taylor, and Houston and Miller. Sides of desperation here from Houston. Needs to be patient here, stay on to his bumper. Yeah, particularly coming through the S's, yeah. you really do need to be careful through there. A guy, the smallest slide can catch you out. You just can't stop in time, right? You should get a run on him here. Miller doesn't have to dive into the pits. He's on the outside. Well, Miller's going to stay out. Nice overtake there by John Houston. Now he can settle down a little bit, get to work, try and pick up some more time on Joe LaCour. Yeah, even I relaxed a bit. <laughs> Parsons on Gomez. This is uh, looks like a three-way tussle. Oh no! Be a lap car. Parsons with a nice pass on Omar. Gomez gets past. No, I think Walton is actually. Oh, that was down. that was John okay. Walton. I thought it was Chuck yeah. Hart or something. So Fox into the pits on lap 22. Lap 22. I was on the hards. We'll see what happens when he takes off. Second, 20 seconds stationary, so yeah, it can't be more than 30. Uh, well, I don't know, 35 maybe, 30, 35 seconds. Total guess. Taylor battle continuing to stay red hot. Yep. So the pit window is going to be opening up for these guys in the next uh, couple of three laps. Three or four laps. Very cagey was uh, Matt Taylor and teammate Mark DeGraw on the strategy that they were going to employ tonight. Despite my uh, reassurances of a uh, lip seal policy, um, and so it's really up in the air for these guys. I, a lot of these guys are going to wait to see about uh, what kind of temperature and their qualifying position, honestly, to come up with their strategy. All right, so Moses in the pits on lap 23. Interesting call. Uh-huh. All right, okay. looks like he's got some front-end damage, so he must have had some, some issue somewhere. Oh, boy. Yeah, talking with Matt Taylor in particular, I don't, you know, I gotta think this race is going more or less like he expected it to go. I think he's, I mean, he's running the times he kind of planned on running, and, uh, so it's gonna be pit stops pretty soon for the guys that are gonna be running the hards twice. No, oh, this is for third. Lemansky on Taylor. And Lemansky gets the pass. Man, I gotta be honest with you, Lemansky may have a little bit more pace over yeah. Taylor at this point. Because he was hounding so. him for a number of laps. He was already starting to stretch it out. I would say actually that was a very nice bit of patience for Kevin Lemansky. I mean, 
I don't know if you can call it exuberance last week or in, in any event, he was well in contention and came unglued for him, but showed us some pretty incredible patience. He was behind Matt Taylor for a long time. Talked about the gravity. He's running there by himself in seventh. He's uh, second. He's got seven seconds uh, behind Joe LaCour and another uh, 11 seconds up over third place Lemansky. So pretty quiet night for DeGrasse so far. Not a bad thing. As you watch Jesse Olsen make his pass over, uh, pass by Chuck Carter. That was for 10th. Uh, John Houston resets fast lap of the race. Yeah, he needs to. He needs to keep pushing. It like quite a bit, actually. Solid three tenths over his previous best time. So, yeah, he understands the uh, he understands the score here. He needs to push because he's not quite there yet on this double sitting strategy. I don't believe. So Kevin Miller in on lap 25, and away back out on the softs, looking to go to the distance here. Ooh, that's a long stint on the softs, about halfway. So, uh, so that's another country heard from. We we didn't hear about the the one stop on the softs, Al. Okay, and came in from what, the fifth, sixth? Yep. So, what was the word on the pits from the pit lane as to how far these guys can go on a full tank? I don't think I got that. Yeah, you know, I didn't really get that either because it. I, I'm thinking they can, you know, make it 65, 70 percent of the time in fun ways, really. Uh, it, it seemed like guys could run the cards way, of, you know, quite a few laps over halfway if necessary. Um, boy, I just, Kevin Miller took a, a, a full stint on half distance on top. That's a, it's pretty remarkable. Like, those things had to have been like, like ailing bad. Yeah, I was word from the pits was uh, saw the last about 20 laps, but let's take a look at Miller's lap times here. Started to fade a little bit before his stop. So yeah, right around about lap 21, he started losing some time slightly, but hmm, not too bad. Yeah, I would have thought it'd be worse, I guess. Looking to re-engage Kevin Miller here. Just pick that one up. Came up awful quickly. So, uh, so running, of course, again. I, I guess that that shorter fuel load. Part I wasn't sure if Parsons was going to try to switch up the strategy after getting involved in that incident. I mean, it's pretty horrible luck. Fred Myers in um, the pits on lap 27. Uh huh, okay. I'm feeling Myers is going to go hard tires, hard tires. He is. No, soft. Soft for Myers. So Myers is away. He joins in 13. Hey, interesting. Now, these guys had split strategies. Teammate, uh, was on this. I don't know if you're on that. Oh, as Ian going by. <laughs> so he may have gotten a report that the sauce were holding up a particular amount of laps and he said, okay, well, we'll go with it then. Yep. This is a nice battle here between Chuck Carter and Jesse Olsen for eight. Both guys, I believe, still need to make their stops. Oh, yeah. Identical lap times. Yeah, Olsen in a great position to pick up some PMR points. Carson's starting to creep up on this battle. So 
so what did, uh, did Houston come in on lap 18? Yeah, so you can take it all the way to 36 at least, right? Yep. So that, uh, that'll be a pretty, if he does take it all the way to 36, that'll de definitely be a shorter last stop. Uh, even, even less fuel. She's so starting to reel in, reel in uh, Matt Taylor and Kevin Lomansky. These guys still need to make their stops. Ian picking up time over Mark DeGras in second. That was seven seconds, now it's going ten. Yeah, Ian Jolicor really starting to turn the screws now that the, the fuel has come. I neglected to look at that. Yeah, Ian Jolicor now down into the nice 108 range. Parsons on the inside of Chuck Carter. That's a dunk. Houston now all over the back of Matt Taylor. Jolicor in. And away on the softs. Yeah, well past halfway, and now Ian Jolicar will have uh, quite a, a speed uh, advantage, you would think, over the hards. Taylor and Houston. Houston having a look on the inside of Matt Taylor. Gonna have to keep it tight. Maybe advantage Taylor here it is. Of that spot it's side by side for a number of corners. Yeah, of course, uh, Ian Jolicor has come out right behind these two. You're right. So as they battle, uh, Jolicor very, may very well pick up time. I, we've seen this in this, you know, been more vintage series that sometimes the outside line can be the more advantageous. Uh, and it certainly is just due to the nature of the corners on this track. But uh, uh, sometimes also with the, the more vintage automobiles, it uh, gives you a little bit more. Oops, Taylor in. Taylor is in, but uh, yeah, between Houston and Joe Corey, 2.2 seconds. Yeah, uh, Houston, I don't think, is in line for the victory anymore with that, that double step that strategy. Now that Joe LaCour has gone on to the sauce, and Joe Houston now works with flat traffic. Uh, and with the Jolicor lap times dropped pretty significantly, I think that takes a John Houston out of range for sure. Taylor rejoins the race in sixth on the softs. So Lemansky has pitted and has beat uh, Taylor here in this pit cycle. So Lemansky now running in fifth. Ekman still needs to make a stop. He is up to fourth. Ra has pitted and zooms a race here, currently in third, but he should move up to second after Houston makes his final stop. For the second half of taxi service there, you mentioned Joel Ekman, so Meyer is back there in 13. Uh, some of the guys that may need to stop in front of Greg and recover positions from there because Greg came in from the ninth or eighth, ninth position, something like that. Yep, and, uh, heavy of cars here in the back as Greg Myers, David Zahn, and Jake Thieves are running really close to to one another. Let's see. Jake has stopped and is so it looks like most everybody took the hards deep and has rejoined on the softs. Moses out on the hards. So he may be the odd man out here. These guys on the softs start closing the gap up on Moses. Yeah, maybe. 
Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's been, it really has been all over the map of the strategy tonight. Um, I think I think the one thing that seems clear right now is the double stop, once again, is, is going to lose out to the single, I think. Brent Moses is good to go to the end. He stopped on lap 23. Yeah. But uh, I think he dropped the ball on this one. Probably should have started the race on the softs or perhaps took a deep breath. Soft option for the second stop. Yeah. Well, we'll see how things play out here. One thing's for sure is, uh, is Joel Lacour is pushing hard in that second spot. And I, I think he's, he's definitely going to have John Houston covered. Uh, Joel Lacour, of course, will not have to make another stop. But, uh, I mean, you wouldn't check it. We wouldn't go halfway and then stop, uh, stop, you know, another time after that. You wouldn't think. Well, we mentioned Houston, uh, who's actually just come into the pits. Yeah. Here on lap 34. So Ian, I was going to say, Ian, like Houston, tends to get a bit impatient, but. So last season he got into a situation where he forced the pass on someone, got into trouble, didn't need to do it. That he was a pit. I was going to mention it. He closed the gap on this. Took a chance or not, but it's not going to play out. Yeah, I didn't think about that myself. That's a good point, Al. But it turns out to be, turns out to be moot. Uh, John Houston will rejoin momentarily in fifth. Uh, Taylor now on the softs. Houston no, rejoins I... in six, but uh, it's going to be it's a battle here to the finish. I think John Houston's still holding the uh, best lap of the race, so uh, very clearly he's going to have going to have pace. It's certainly better pace than Matt Taylor has shown so far, uh, and you think that John Houston would be able to recover some of those positions. So uh, in fact, I mean. Sorry, Al. He did show enough pace to recover, perhaps all the way back up into four. So those positions are there for him. I was going to mention Parsons on back into the pits. Uh, Parsons running in seventh, but he still has to make another stop. Parsons has sure recovered a lot better than David Zahn had uh, after that incident. I think Zahn picked up enough damage where he had, did have to make that, that extra stop for repairs. Ekman in the pits. He's going to come out. Looks like in sixth. Parsons is in. So Parsons is getting serviced. So he's going to lose out to Moses, Feebster. Myers, it appears. Parsons is now away. Where's Olsen? It's a lot down. Parsons in jeopardy of going a lap down here. The last car running on the lead lap. So, of course, not far off. Yeah, Parsons' best lap, really, uh, 09 flat. Yeah, that, that will not keep you on the lead lap, I don't think, uh, from the amount of race we've got left here. Been a strange night for Chris Moses. I mean, I haven't really, well, good after this pass potential. Kevin Miller. Ah. This is going to have to earn this one. <laughs> oh, that was, that was really close. I don't, I think uh, Moses almost uh, had to engage Moses' power there or something. That's the only way he could have imagined that uh, Miller would have been sliding back up in front of him like that. Uh, 
Uh, but anyway, now that that's calmed down a little bit, it's been a strange night for Chris Mother. Hey, he hasn't, I mean, something happened early, but other than that, hey, he just hasn't shown terribly good pace. And uh, like, I was saying, I, I mentioned something about his pace last night. He said, don't, don't worry about it. Car feels great. I think, uh, I think everything's going to shake out fine in the race. It just hasn't. I mean, I got to think he's getting out of this race kind of what he expected to be, but it just turned out not to be good enough, right? I think. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right on. Either that or just missed out on strategy here. But uh, not close enough this time by to make a move on Kevin Miller. Houston, meanwhile. Oh, it's a fast lap of the race with a 108.5. But uh, now has a group of cars in front of him on the same tire compound. So passes uh, are going to be a little harder to come by for Miller. Well, you know, the I'm guy sorry, up Houston. ahead. Yeah, the guy up ahead, uh, Matt Taylor, right? His best lap was 1091. So I don't know if you're John Houston, it might be time that I talked about taking risk this is kind of what i was talking about on this track uh and the nature of it and john used to might need to risk that whoa yeah car <laughs> off <laughs> yeah oh Dig that up. I was going to say, uh, John Houston might need to risk another 08.5 uh, to get that position. Lead. Now 13. 13 and a half seconds over Mark DeGraff in second. Lemansky now a bit of a gap over Matt Taylor in third. Battle on track right now is this Moses Miller. Moses just needs to get as close to Miller's bumper here as he can, but Miller with the tire advantage. have an well, opportunity here at turn one. Well, Kevin Miller did stop halfway, right? Basically yeah. on those softs. So you got to think that uh, that higher advantage swing to Moses' favor. This might work better for Moses on the inside this time by. Miller battling with a bit of understeer there. Some lap traffic. It's starting to pull away slightly here. This lap car may benefit Kevin Miller. Yeah, that's kind of I'm just staying on that battle myself. Rocket past Chris Moses in a turn one. Oh, man. Well, oh. I'd have predicted that one there. <laughs> so all that work by Moses is going to have to do it all over again. Yeah, Moses is probably seeing oh, that. Oh, big slide from John Houston there as he starts. He was really on the tail of Matt Taylor. See, Matt Taylor has reset his best lap. So yeah, back uh, to the low, uh, the high 108s uh, for Taylor himself. He used to miss the opportunity to put down another one of those 18.5s.
but I don't think really if you're part of Keith Rock Dam Bam, Houston and Parsons right now, you're feeling that bad for for fifth place. I mean, just, just put something on the board right. at this point, you know? Yep, Houston uh, in fifth, Parsons in 11th. That early incident from between Parsons and Zion. Really. Yeah, because Parsons kind of looked like all of a sudden he, I mean, he looked lost, right? At qualifying, qualifying 13th. <laughs> and all of a sudden on the softs, it looked like, you know, world beater. Um, it was, it was uh, looking like things were going to be okay uh, right up until that point. His laps quickly winding down. Uh -huh. Uh, 42 or 49. A couple times he picked up on John Houston really wheeling that thing around, that rear of the car sliding all over the place. From the back of the seventh position, Moses finally got another run here on uh, Kevin Miller down the straight. May not be close enough. Yeah, and I was, I don't think he is. And I was going to say, it's really Ekman's not too far up the road uh, in front of Kevin Miller. And so if you're Moses, you're thinking, well, I, you know, I've still got a, whoa, still got a shot if I can get past Kevin Miller, possibly to get up to Ekman for that sixth, sixth place. But I don't think it's happening now. I think uh, Moses is out of laps. Showing him too much. Winner last Thursday night, looking to make it two races in a row here. He just put Aaron Parsons behind a lap. Oh yeah, that's that's a good feeling. The old the old double super badassness, double double win. Uh, coming up on some lap cars as well. He's sandwiched between a couple. Gotta be careful. Oh, 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 Robbins with a pick. Loses the rear, punches it into the wall, and pulls the shoe. Oh, jeepers. It was, look, it was a pretty tough night for Ryan Robbins. Running a couple of positions out the point. Uh, decided to pull the, pull the shoe a couple laps to go, and a couple laps down. You know, I get it. They have an opportunity here. Now he's really close to Matt Taylor. Taylor defending the inside, probably the preferred line. Houston resets fast lap of the race and takes it way wide. The big tank slapper on entry did it. Oh, did a nice Chips job actually to gather the. Taylor hangs on to that spot. Oh, again. A big correction on, uh, on on entry there on the braking. Got it up on the curb there. Loses a bit of time. Plenty of laps, plenty of laps. If you're feeling good and you think a Taylor is attackable, there's, you know, you've got another solid three or four laps to be able to get them. Uh, you just basically do what you did last time, except not to make the mistake and to pull it into one, right? It's not gonna be this time by for Houston. Hello, Jake Feebster now has joined the party. He is running in ninth and just a couple seconds off. Well, Moses. Well, he sure has. And he's probably going to have a look at Moses here going into one. Well, this is only going to benefit Kevin Miller. Yeah, benefit Kevin Miller until Feimster gets up to him. Ooh, oh, Aaron Parsons is done. Disaster. 
number of retirements here. going to move uh, Mascarelli into the points. Yeah. If he can yeah. close it out here. Oh, big slide from Moses with a lockup. So, you got to figure that... Uh, <laughs> Initial pass for Moses and then getting kind of balked a little bit by a lap car really cemented the double position. Moses just could not counter that, but Jim Feebster now is looking to take advantage. Now I'd kind of forgotten to mark Feemster's progress through the field. Uh, Started from the back. Now yeah. Running in eighth and having a look at seventh. Drive, Jake. A lot of wheel spin on exit there for Houston. Yeah, it's it's hard. Uh, some guys are able to they kind of roll around the apex and, and uh, have trouble getting power down. Some guys are taking it out wide a little straighter so they can get the power down a little earlier um, but not having the optimal line on exit so it's it's either one or the other and it can and it's just an interesting approach i've noticed oh moses with him off greg myers oh. gets past well, moses drops down to 10. yeah oh oh oh, oh. hot tires are damage or something for Moses. Moses loses a lap here. Now Houston with a little over a lap to go in this race. They have to seize on this opportunity here. It's going to be enough. Now, he may not have been able to make it around the track a couple more times. All over the back of Kevin Miller. Miller going to defend the inside at turn one. Not going to help. There, maybe it will. Jake gets it done, and Miller gets it spun. Oh. Myers, another spot, maybe. No, too far away, perhaps. So now we got some lap traffic here going on to the main straight between Taylor, Miller, Houston. Oh. He's going to get him. is going to be. And it looks like Houston's going to go. Oh, he gets a contact oh, a with David out. Zahn. Uh -huh. He's going to hang on to that fifth spot, but contact between him and Zahn. Meanwhile, Joe LaCour rounding the final corner. Or the second to last corner. Through the kink here, and he's going to take the win. At Kyalami. A great race for Ian Jolacor, Mark de Gras. Gonna quietly finish in second. Very uneventful night for de Gras, but two straight races, two second place finishes. Kevin Lemansky with a great job. Gonna take third, final podium position. 
behind him is Matt Taylor, actually not that far off of LeBansky. John Houston after that uh, getting involved with David Zahn is going to finish in fifth. Joel Ekman with another impressive run here. Going to take home the sixth spot. As impressive as Jake Beecher, who finished the race, side of the race, dead last, going to take seventh. Kevin Miller is going to hang on to eighth. Rick Myers, last car on the lead lap. I think it's going to be enough time. As Greg finish, going to have to settle for ninth. Miller in eighth. Wow, what a raucous race here at the end. See if we can bring in our race winner. Ian Jolicor, do you copy? Evening, guys. I do. Great job, Ian. Great uh, run here tonight. Qualified behind your teammate, closely behind your teammate in second, Samard. You guys had uh, started on the hard tires. Kind of got, uh, you know, swarmed by these guys running on the softs. Fell back behind Houston, but... Uh, Nonetheless, you guys had your strategy all planned out. Did you uh, figure Houston would be a threat there on this two-stop strategy, or did you guys feel you had a Well, we, you know, we just ran a race tonight. We weren't worrying about Houston. We saw you had t softs fitted at the beginning and uh, knew he'd either have to go long or short on the second stop, and he played his cards a little too early, I think, and uh, we were able to cruise home. Really bummed for Phil with the uh, connection problem. I think... Uh, I think we could have pulled off the the one two podium steps tonight, but uh, we'll get them next week. That was that was a great race. Yeah, it was too bad for Philippe. Uh, pretty clearly, given the way things shook out uh, and the, the two stop not working out, it was it was very likely uh, you guys would have would have been been up there somewhere. Uh, and congratulations on the win tonight. It was the qualifying I was wondering Thank about. You guys really did put on. Uh, really, a pretty good crushing on the field and qualifying. Is this a is this a setup thing? Do you guys think maybe you found a little something uh, out of the car for that that small performance gain? Uh, you know what? I don't think so. I got a little bit of practice in this week. Phil put in maybe thirty more laps than I did, so we both got in a little bit of practice, and uh, we had agreed once we both get a flyer in to uh, to try and help one another out. And uh, he lifted me up, I think, two or three tenths on my best. Uh, with a little bit of help, and uh, I think uh, yeah, it was a tenth between us for pole, and uh, we couldn't have we couldn't have been more thrilled to start there. We were running uh, separate strategies tonight, so just to cover off cover off the field in case someone pulled a fast one. But uh, I'm I'm kind of interested to see how that would have played out if he didn't uh, if he didn't have that incident. But nonetheless, good good points for the team. That's a that's a good win tonight, and uh, we're gonna celebrate this one. Yeah, congratulations, and it looks like you snatched a fast lap of the race there late, but uh, really impressive run. That's two races in a row. You won last week at Laguna Seca. I'm sorry, at Sebring, and uh, must must feel very good heading into next week <laughs> at sure uh, at Laguna um, next Monday night. Uh, any early thoughts uh, going into that race? Carrying the a little you know, extra with, weight. With seemed, weight like, I, seemed like it, I, it hurt some guys, not so much to Gras. Yeah, I see. I see what it did there uh, with the weight. DeGraw's fast. DeGraw's super fast. Taylor, Moses, those guys are super, super fast. And uh, I don't think I drove a perfect race tonight. I drove a good race, but not a perfect race. And DeGraw, DeGraw is always usually right there with me, especially of late. He's he's come on strong in the last five races of the last season. He's been there right at the front both races this season and with the weights. So, uh, yeah, he's going to be a hard one to beat. I'm uh, I'm interested to see how it affects me next Monday, and we'll we'll see where she goes. But hopefully, uh, I end up in here at the end of the race, and and we have a few laughs. But thanks for the broadcast, guys. Good Congra good time. Congratulations, Ian. Again, good luck next week. Thank you. Well, Brad, uh, pretty pretty good race. A lot of passing out there. I think this track, like I said, lends itself to some. Uh, great overtaking opportunities, especially going into turn one, and saw some great side-by-side -side action throughout the night. Agreed. I think it's a, a good, especially in the a good track for the vintage open wheel type situation, like we've uh, we find ourselves in the last couple seasons. So, 
I I like it. I like also the the point situation. Uh, look, the the captain clutch guys finish second and fourth. I'm mean, job done or second. Yeah, so job done for those guys. I mean, uh, you can't really ask for any more. Both of the cars having weight. You know what, Al? Both are gonna have weight next week too. <laughs> I know that's a good point. So, yeah, so so there you go. In fact, uh, DeGraw will actually have uh, quite a bit. But hey, if you're Global Sites taxi service, you got to be feeling pretty good. I think those guys are gonna retain. Uh, second in the championship. It's going to be close. Squeaky Wheels uh, did a pretty good job tonight, too. So the top three teams still looking pretty good and uh, and and running pretty strong. And other than that, it was an interesting race. Uh, good passes. Kept us engaged uh, till the end. And uh, and and there you go. Got to make sure we get the, get the plug in for Thursday nights as well here, too, tonight uh, coming up. So, yeah, I'm, there, there you go. I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, Brad said, it's going to do it for us here tonight. It was it was a, a fun race to broadcast. We're going to be back uh, Thursday night uh, for round two of the GT series coming from uh, coming to you live from Laguna Seca, and then uh, the week uh, the Monday a week from tonight uh, it's this Lotus 79's turn Monday night league's turn at uh, Laguna as uh, they visit that track as well. So uh, until next week thanks everybody for tuning in uh hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully we'll see you next week have a great night